Good morning, y'all. Welcome to the Sherry Show. I'm Sherry Martin, and you're not. Well, actually, I'm not Sherry Martin. Uh, she's one of a kind, of course. I'm Bill Senyard. Good to meet y'all again. I'm filling in for Sherry today, and we're just going to wing it, as they say, because I don't have a clue what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about some Christmas stuff, and we're going to talk to some folks from McKaysville, and we're going to just kind of chit-chat and wish y'all a Merry Christmas on top of that, because it is Christmas season, of course, and I've been listening to the Christmas music, and you know, I like some of them, and some of them it's just like, what are they trying to do? It's just like that. Uh, anyway, music is a, is a, it's kind of like a beauty contest. Uh, some people like this one, and some people like that one, and some people don't like any of them. So, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. But anyway, it's good to see y'all again. I haven't been on the show for quite a while, and Sherry called me up and, I guess, wrangled me into doing the show for her. But uh, I said, well, look, I can't talk like you do. Uh, nobody can, of course. And uh, what am I going to talk about? She said, well, just talk about what's going on in your life, and then we're going to have some preaching. I said, well, good. Preachers can take up the whole hour, and I'm glad we've got one. So we're going to introduce him here shortly. Uh, speaking of Christmas songs, one of she asked me to do it, a uh, Christmas song that is Sherry's favorite Christmas song. And I said, Sherry, it's not really appropriate, I don't think, for that song. It's not uh Christ-like, or it's not expressing the gospel, or it's not talking about the birth of Jesus. No, no, I want you to do it. I said, okay, I'll do it, but uh, I'm just going to do one little snippet of it. Well, here it goes. Grandma got ran over <laughs> by a reindeer, coming home from our house Christmas Eve. You may say there's no such thing as Santa, but as for me and Grandpa, we believe. Now, believe it or not, that is not her favorite song. I just had to throw that in. I was at a church one time singing, and my dad was present, and uh, he asked me to sing his favorite Christmas song, and I, I said, well, your favorite Christmas song is Grandma Got Ran Over by a Rain. I'm not singing that in a church service. No, thank you. No, it was something else, but we had fun with that. One of my favorites, though, is since it's Christmas season. And I'm just going to give you a little snippet of this one, too. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. I love that song. My mother used to sing that, and it gets me a little emotional when I hear it, so just want to do that to you. But anyway, Merry Christmas to all of you. I haven't seen you in a while, like I said, and I just wanted to tell you one thing about Christmas. Jesus loves you, and he cares for you. Just remember that. No matter what you're going through, if you remember that, you'll be fine. I also want to tell you something else that's going on up north of here. If you get a chance to go uh, up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, uh, my daughter Kaylee, I want to brag on her just a little bit. She's in charge of the Biblical Times Theater there on the parkway. It's a dinner and a show. Um, well worth the money to go see it. They, they do some Christmas carols at the beginning while you're eating, of course. That gets your food going down real good. And then uh, after that, they, they take an intermission and they, they, they do the story of Christ. And it's very good. It's, it's uh, live performances, but they also have some hologram performances. They've got a hologram screen big as this building here, and I get to play King Herod. So if you get to go up there and see the show, you'll see me playing King Herod and my trusty uh, servant behind me with a big sword. That's my son-in-law. So anyway, go up and see it if you can. It's on the parkway. I think it's traffic light number one. And uh, if you'll just look on the website, Biblical Times Theater, you'll see what's going on there. But also, in that complex there, at the Biblical Times Theater, they have uh, brought in the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame. They've moved it from Dollywood, and so it's there as well. You can go in and see that. And if you have been around a while, and you remember going to Gatlinburg and seeing the Christus Gardens, they have bought that. Christus Gardens actually closed doors. And they bought that whole shebang, all the, the wax figures and all that. And that's in the complex as well. So there's a lot to do there. They've got a hotel next door. Uh, buffet next door as well. So there's a lot to do in Pigeon Forge. So if you get a chance this Christmas season, go up and see it. Look on the website for times of shows and all that. So She also has uh, Southern Gospel music artists and groups coming in and singing as well. I think the inspirations will be there next week. So keep my daughter in mind too. Kaylee has uh, been inspired by the Lord to pick up songwriting and she's writing Southern Gospel music and her mentor is Phil Cross. And so many of you know who he is. Uh, he's written many, many hits for gospel music over the years. Also, just to update you, uh, my wife and I are expecting our 10th grandchild any day now. So uh, that should be our last one. But we'll, 
I know I don't look old enough to have 10 grandkids, but I do. So anyway, just that's just an update on me. I haven't seen you in a while, like I said. And we're going to talk now with some good folks from uh, one of my favorite neck of the woods, as they say, and that's McKaysville, Georgia. We have uh, Miss Connie Davis. She plays piano up at First Baptist there. And uh, Dr. Drake, he's the pastor there. And we're just going to chat a minute with th these folks until we get into some preaching and some music. I mean, what else can you do at Christmas but preaching and music, right? So <laughs> anyway, uh, let's start with you, Doctor. Uh, how long have you been up there at First Baptist? Well, we came in April to do an interim and have done, um, this, would, this was number six interims that I have been able to do since uh, um, other employment uh, that I transitioned into. <clears throat> and so we were there uh, for April and it just began to be a, a, a good fit for everyone. And so September, starting September, the church said we would like to have you consider the possibility of being the senior pastor instead mm -hmm. of just the senior interim pastor. And so uh, we have embraced that opportunity, and there we are. So you said, count me in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, and obviously the Lord has to move upon your heart to do those sorts of things and make you make it a good fit. Yeah. 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 Now, you also have told me that you're over at uh, another favorite part of my neck of the woods, and that's over toward Cleveland, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. over at Truett McConnell University. Wonderful four-year liberal arts university that teaches every platform from a Christian worldview, godly professors, wonderful administration. Our president, Dr. Emir Kanner, will be our preaching guest this coming Sunday at First Baptist McKaysville. Cool. You know, so that's a, but <clears throat> I'm the director of church relations there as well and uh, working sort of uh, wearing two hats, but it fits, it works, and uh, that I connect with pastors all over the state of Georgia, associational missionaries, churches, and um, just kind of assist them, walk with them through some uh, trying times, if they're going through trying times, just kind of a, a mediator in many ways, just trying to level people and uh, just uh, keep them strong. Good deal. Yeah. Now, I told you earlier before the show, I like some of those restaurants you got over there in Cleveland. I like going. I'm not going to plug those restaurants because it's not fair to the rest of them, but they got one of the best hamburgers in the state of Georgia. Uh, anyway, I uh, also have uh, his piano player with us, Miss Connie Davis. She's been on the show a few times. And uh, tell us what you've been up to lately. Well, just getting ready for Christmas. I have five sons, so getting ready with them. Not doing traditional this year, but I got to go see each one of them so far. Well, four out of five. And uh, so that, that was fun just to spend quality time with each one of them, their families, individually. Yeah, so. we were talking about how hard, how hard it is to get everybody together yes. this time of year now. Because in our day, I'll say in our day. <laughs> We can all relate to this. We just all loaded up and went to Grandma's house. That was expected, yep. and we just did it. But nowadays, uh, they're all gone hither and yon, and it's just like pulling teeth to get everybody together. Yes. Hmm. Well, uh, I think at this time, we're going to play some music for you. Uh, we have uh, one of my favorite groups from Jasper, uh, Angel Spirit. They're no longer singing uh, Miss, uh, there was a ladies trio, and in fact, I'm probably the only guy that's ever been in that group. I helped them sing a concert one time down at Tate, Georgia, at the gymnasium. We had a big crowd, and they all walked in and saw a fella in a ladies' trio. But anyway, I had to do the soprano part, an octave lower, and I had to cram the, the songs in. It was fun, and it was very rewarding. We got the gospel out, and that's what counted. So, uh, Angel Spirit, and y'all please pray for Miss Selena right now. She's uh, a part of that group. She's suffering um, pancreatic cancer. And it's moving on pretty good with her, and she's uh, we're keeping updated. Her and Mr. Rick Hales, that's her husband, and y'all keep those folks in your prayers. They need it, and uh, we love them dearly. And um, as far as Angel Spirit goes, I don't think they're singing anymore because of what's going on there. And um, fine ladies, and we really enjoy their music. So we're going to go right now to sing, to hear Angel Spirit do one for you for Christmas. Yes. 
sitting sun holy angels come and take me to my home holy angels take me home i've been waiting for so long to go and rest beside I guess we're back here. Uh, we want to do a Christmas song for you. Miss Connie was going to play one, and she suggested I sing one with her. So I'm always a fly by the seat of your pants kind of guy. And I said, sure, let's do one. I, I enjoy this song anyway. Y'all pray for me that I can see it, because these lights here are like, whoop, whoop. So anyway, she's going to play Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. star of Bethlehem shining afar through shadows dim giving a light for those who long have gone and guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay beautiful star of Bethlehem shine star divine brighter and brighter he will shine beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on beautiful star of Bethlehem shine upon us until the
back to the studio. And we do wish you a Merry Christmas and thank you for the opportunity to come uh, today and to spend just a few moments of your time around the thought of Christmas. In 1992, 30 years ago, the United States military put together a benevolent campaign they entitled Operation Restore Hope. And it was providing the starving thousands of people in Somalia much necessary needs. U.S. News and World Report covered the story, and they quoted General Colin Powell at that time, who said, Operation Restore Hope has two conditions. First, this mission must be well defined, and second, the mission needs to be viewed as a commitment to the people in need in Somalia. Well, for all practical purposes, it was a roaring success. But when you think about it in the heart of God, He also has His operation of hope. 
As a matter of fact, I believe that we could easily say that God has this year Operation Hope Christmas 2022. His mission as well is well-defined. God's mission is well-defined in the fact that it centers around a man. There are two Gospels in the New Testament that give us the account of Christmas. Matthew's Gospel and then the Gospel of Luke. In Matthew chapter 1, we are given a portrait of this man, this wonderful mission that is centered around Christmas. This man of Christmas is, is expressed to us and exposed to us when the Bible says, She shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Mission is centered around a man. So let me ask you just a question or two. And the first question is, who is this man? Who is this man that gets our attention at Christmas? Well, the Bible says there in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 1, His name is Jesus, God's salvation. This is a name of purpose. Or really, when you think about it, this is a name of provision. God provided His Son as the answer for the need of the world. Just like Operation Hope, Restore Hope for the needy people of Somalia back in 1992, God also has His operation to restore the hope of mankind. And in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, we see this man. Who is he? He is Jesus. He is the one who has come with a purpose. He has come with a provision. And that is from the heart of God to, as the Bible says, save us from our sin. But the Bible also tells us that not only is this man a man of purpose, he is God's salvation, but he's also God with us. You see, the Bible goes on to say there in uh, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, the Bible says, Therefore the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. So not only is this man named Jesus a man of purpose, a man of provision, he's God's salvation, but he is also God with us, meaning that he brings about God's very presence. And so with that, we answer the question, God's answer, God's man. Who is he? Well, he is Jesus. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. I oftentimes take a moment of my morning times. I know many of you have quiet times that you spend alone with the Lord and perhaps you have your Bible or a cup of coffee, a quiet place that you go and maybe even a devotional guide that you like to read. One of my favorites that I read on a regular basis and I trust on a daily basis is authored by a, name, a man named Oswald Chambers. The volume is called My Utmost for His Highest. And in the December the 25th, knowing that today's not the 25th of December, but if you were to have that volume and you were to look at it for December the 25th, you would begin to read his journal entry about God with us. And he speaks about how God is with us in history. And listen to what he says. Jesus Christ was born into this world, not from it. He did not evolve out of history. He came in to history from the outside. He is not man becoming God, but God incarnate. God coming into human flesh. His life is the highest and the holiest entering at and in this lowliest hour. That's who He is. He is God with us. But He goes on to say that not only is He God with us in history, but now He's God with us in me and in you. Listen to what He finally says in this journal entry from Oswald Chambers. 
Just as our Lord call, came into human history from the outside, so he must come into me from the outside. Have I allowed my personal human life to become a Bethlehem for the Son of God? I cannot enter into the realm of the kingdom of God unless I am born from above by a birth totally unlike a natural birth. Jesus said, ye must be born again. This is not a command. It is a foundation fact. The characteristic of a new birth is that I yield myself completely to God and that Christ is formed in me. Who is this man? Well, he is God's provision and he's God's presence. But let me ask you a second question to this most interesting time of the year. Some have even said it's the most wonderful time of the year. Not only have I asked you, who is this man, but how did he come? How did he get here? Well, again, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, there in verse 21, the Bible tells us that he came naturally. Listen again to what the Bible says. She will bear a son naturally. The birth of Jesus Christ was not miraculous. Listen to me. The birth of Jesus Christ was not a miraculous thing. It was a birth. The conception of Jesus was the miraculous event that we so honor and that we pay attention to. But his birth was natural. John's Gospel in chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says that the Word, speaking of Jesus, that the Word became flesh and He dwelt among us. So the birth of Jesus Christ was quite natural. But I don't want to stop there because the birth of Jesus Christ was supernatural. Again, the Bible says, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. But listen again. It says in verse 23 of Matthew chapter 1, Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Now that's the supernatural element of this. And that's the beauty and the genius of God behind what you and I celebrate as Christmas. How did he come? He came naturally. He came supernaturally. And if you would like to, let me just go ahead and throw in that third answer to that question, how he came. It was miraculous. People all through that time heard and experienced this miraculous event that God had brought to pass. And may I say that even people today in your day and in mine, perhaps in our past, our present, prayerfully in our future, that it is a miraculous thing to meet this man named Jesus. He changes our life from the inside out. And really, if you want to talk about a Christmas gift, that's the greatest Christmas gift that's ever been given, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. So who is he? He's God's provision. He's God's salvation. And he's the very presence of God for all of us. And how did he get here? naturally, through that natural course of activity when God planted the seed within the womb of Mary and Jesus was born naturally, but also supernaturally. How? Because heaven touched earth and God's will was performed through that young virgin girl named Mary and Jesus was born and brings about a miraculous change in the heart of everyone who receives him. Let me ask you a third and a final question. What is the reason? What is the reason for his coming? If we've determined in part who he is, and if we have also tried to answer the question, what, how did he get here? Maybe we should ask ourselves the question, for what reason? Why did he come? In this day and time, I realize that there's a, an assault, sadly, upon the church. There's an assault, sadly, upon the Bible and the message of the Bible. So we need, to, we need to answer that question probably with some real serious understanding or definition. 
So what do we do? We go back to the Bible for the answer. Again, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and again in verse 23, let's answer the question, for what purpose, for what reason did Jesus come? The lowly babe in the manger grew to be a, a young man, living a sinless life before others, and then his itinerant ministry for those three, three and a half years. Why did he do all of that? Why did God open up heaven and send His Son to this world? Why, why, why? Well, we have the answer. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, what does the Bible say again? It says that she's going to bear a son. You're going to call his name Jesus. And watch, here comes the purpose. Here comes the reason. Because He's going to save His people from their sins. That's the reason that He came. Oh yes, He was a miracle worker. Absolutely taught wonderful truths. He did miraculous things in the midst of the people of His day. But He came with a purpose. He came with one goal in mind, and that was to give His life for you and for me. And so, He saves His people from their sin. So what does He do? In verse 21, the Bible says that He takes something away. He takes away our sin in his life as the lowly babe, as the young man, and then as Jesus the preacher, and then the sacrifice for your sins. And for my. He takes our sins away. And so therefore, Jesus has come for the very purpose to do just that. But he's also come to abide in us. What does the Bible say again in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23? You're going to call his name Emmanuel, or he shall be called Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. So not only is Jesus going to take something away, Jesus is going to bring something to us, and that's his presence. That's, him, that's himself. He wants to live in your life and abide with you and to walk with you. Some of you probably right now viewing this broadcast are challenged by all kinds of decisions. You're going through difficult moments. They have told me that um, even though we might sing that, that Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year, it's not for everybody. There's a lot of loneliness, a lot of heartbreak, and a lot of uh, desperation and depression that sits in. Can I tell you something? Jesus has come not only to take something away, and that is your sins and mine, but Jesus has come also to bring himself so that He might abide with you. Do you know what that means? That means He wants to walk with you. He wants to sit with you. He wants to listen to you. He wants to speak to you. If you will just allow Him to abide in your life, He will do exactly that. I love John chapter 15. It's one of my favorite chapters in all of the Gospels. And John's Gospel is, is such a portrait of the, of the Son of God. Uh, in the person of Jesus Christ. And in John chapter 15, you have this beautiful picture of I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Isn't that a beautiful portrait of why Jesus came? Why we celebrate Christmas so that he would take away our sin, but also that he would come and that he would abide with us. So that's the man. That's the reason, and that is the reason for Christmas it's centered around a man, but it's also centered around a message. There's a message of Christmas. Um, in some ways, it's, we've already talked about it, but in other ways, it's, all, it's, it's beyond the Christmas account. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, the Bible says that Jesus came, and, it, and he came with this message. He came with a very simple message. The Bible says that Jesus came and in His coming He had a message and He spoke to them with words of wisdom and He says, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, you think about the very message that Jesus came. It's pretty simple. It's a... It's a, it's a two-word type of statement or a two-statement uh, message that he gave. He first said that we should repent. You see, this is a message calling for change. That's what repent means, to change, to change direction, to change attitude, to change decision. Repenting means you turn 180 degrees in the direction that you're going 
and you go a new direction. So that's what Jesus has come for. He's come to change our direction, to change our decision, to change our attitude, to change us. And so therefore, his message is a simple message which simply says, repent, change. Now you say, well, David, I've heard that term before. I, 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 but I, what does it really mean to repent? What does it really mean to change? Well, we're pretty simple people, are we not? I think you could probably understand the word repentance or the change in three simple letters. A, B, C. A, I'm going to accept. I'm going to accept the fact that I am a sinner. And that my life has been... Depart, my li I have departed my life from God. God has a plan for my life, but I say no to that plan. So if I'm going to really change, if I'm going to repent, what do I do? I accept the fact that I have sinned, that I've broken His rule. B, that I want to believe that Jesus Christ is the answer, that Jesus Christ is the way. If I'm going to really, truly see my life change, it's not going to be because of me, it's because of Him. And so therefore, I accept the fact that I am a sinner and that I'm going to believe that Jesus Christ is my answer. He's the way. He's the path that I should follow. And then C of ABC, change my direction and follow God. Just change my direction and follow God. The Bible tells us in the Proverbs, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it, is the way of death. So what do I need to do? I need to change. I need to come to an awareness and an acceptance that I am a sinner and that I need to believe that Jesus Christ, as the Bible tells us in the Christmas account, that He came to save me from my sin. So I believe that in my heart and then I change. He changes me as it would be from the inside out. And so this is a message calling for change. But it's also a message, it's also a message that will last for eternity. You see, the Bible says that Jesus Christ came. He came to save us from our sin and that He is going to abide with us. And in Luke chapter 4, the Bible again tells us that this is a message of eternity. Did you know that the Bible says that when Jesus came into this world that He came with a message and in Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 17, or excuse me, in verse 18, the Bible tells us exactly what his message was. Listen to what the Bible says. He came, and the Bible says, that the Spirit of the Lord, and this is what he said, that the Spirit of the Lord has come upon me, and he has appointed me to bring about the gospel. So what is this message all about? It's about good news. Listen to me. It's, it's really good news. Did you remember in the Christmas account what the, the, what the shepherds heard from the angel of the Lord that came? The heavenly host then followed suit. And what did he say? What did that angel, that angelic messenger say? I bring you good news. I bring you good news. Glad tidings. This is a message that you need and it is good news. So don't ever think that Christmas is not a message and not a, an account of good news, because it is. It is good news. And perhaps you need to hear some good news today. We're encircled oftentimes around too much bad news, but hey, I've got some good news for you today. Jesus has come to take away your sins. Jesus has come to walk with you and abide with you. And He wants you to know the good news lasts forever. So it's a message of good news. It's also a message of hope. Listen to what, again, the Bible tells us there in this message that Jesus has preached. It says he has, sent, he has been sent to proclaim this wonderful good news to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind and to free those who are in bondage and who are enslaved. In other words, this is a message of hope. A lot of people in this day and time have, have pretty much lost their, uh, their whole thought of hope. There is no hope in their life, they think. Uh, everything is gone. Everything has, has, has been taken from me. There is no hope, but there is hope. And the hope begins with a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus. 
and He wants to give you hope. His message for you and for me is good. It's good news, and it's a message of hope. And it's also a message of acceptance. He embraces us. The Bible says to declare the favorable year of the Lord. See, it's a message of acceptance. And I don't know if you're a church-going person or not. I don't know that that's really an important question for you to ask or to be asked. Uh, I don't know that you have gone to church and you fell out of church and you don't want to go to church anymore. Those are decisions I realize that you have, you've got to wrestle with. But I can tell you one thing, regardless of where you are on that path, regardless of where you are on your journey, God accepts you. Why? Because He's bringing good news to you. He's bringing a message of hope to you. And we think about that at times like this. Christmas 2022. Operation Hope. Yeah. Restore hope in your life and in mine. And so therefore, this is Operation Restore Hope Christmas 2022. And I trust that these simple words that I've shared with you and that wonderful biblical account that you can read on your own if you wanted to read the Christmas account there in Matthew and there in Luke. But there's a message for all of us in this day and time that we need to hear. And I trust that you're listening right now and that perhaps you're even responding to what the Spirit of God is saying in your heart even now to invite the Lord Jesus into your life like Bethlehem. Just open the door. As Jesus said, if we hear His voice and open the door of our life, He will come in. There is a church in Chicago. I've never been to that church, but this is what I have heard. That at one time in the life of this church, very large church, in this day and time we would call it a mega church. But in the suburbs of Chicago, in South Barrington, Illinois, there is this church. And at one time, they had the marquee, their sign, the name of their church out on the boulevard. So as people passed by, they could see the name of the church. But on the sign of that church were these words, Everybody matters to God. Now just think about that for a moment. Everybody matters matters to God. Now they may not matter to you or me, but they matter to God. There are countries of the world that just have no concern for their population, but those people matter to God. From sea to shining sea, whoever they are, or perhaps whoever you are, you need to understand that you matter to God. And you are the reason for the season. You are the reason for Christmas. Jesus Christ came for you, my friend. We as children used to sing, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are what? Precious in His sight. Why? Because Jesus loves the children of the world. Well, boys and girls, all of us, we need to remember, not only does, not only do we matter to God, but He loves us with an everlasting love. And so therefore, Mary was going to bear a child. And they were going to call His name Jesus because He was going to save us from our sins. And it was just fulfilling the biblical prophecy when the Bible says that the virgin should conceive and bear a son and you shall call His name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So my prayer for you for this Christmas in 2022 is that you'll understand that He has come for you to bring you hope in your life and that Christmas 2022 will restore your hope in the man and the message of Christmas. Pray with me, would you do that? Father in heaven, it is a wonderful time of the year not because of the circumstances of our life or the things that have or have not worked out. But Father, it's a wonderful time of the year because 
a special delivery was made to planet Earth in the form of your Son, our Savior, a man with a message that gives us hope for today and tomorrow. May we embrace this wonderful reality, this wonderful message in this wonderful time of Christmas 2022. Lord God, we love you and thank you for loving us is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.